Hi, my name is Christina Leong, Matrix number AF210122 from Group 3 for Section 9, Sustainable Construction Management. In this video, my groommates and I will be doing a presentation based on our project report. We will be discussing several items, including chosen site, objectives and aims, and theories based on two things, which is sustainable strategies and project management. And afterwards, I'll be explaining the methodology for our project, and my groupmates will be explaining the results of our findings and the discussions based on it. And at the end, I'll be concluding our presentation. Introducing my groupmates, Doris Kong Zenzin, AF210093, Jovita Tan Noel, AF210088, and Seraphim Wei Xiaoan, AF210111. Hi, I'm Jovita. I will talk about the introduction of our project. Starting with the background of our selected site area, PDD64472, which is SM9739, Taman Wasa Inda in Badabahat, Johor. Managed by Badu Raya Development, it is currently in Phase 3 of a comprehensive development initiative. The site transformed from a swampy area to a residential zone. Next, our objective is to analyze the real-world application of sustainability approach and construction management. We aim to compare the ideal practice with what actually happening on the construction site. Moving to our theoretical framework, we will delve into sustainable strategy. This involves a comprehensive co approach covering procurement, site consideration, material selection, waste reduction, recycling, energy efficiency, and more. The overall goal are to minimize ecological impact and enhance the long-term viability of the built environment. Continue with the theoretical framework, we will explore project management principle. Effective project management is fundamental to success and, and in the context of sustainable construction, it extends beyond traditional consideration to include environmental stewardship and social responsibility. As we move forward, our plan is to link theory to practical at Taman Wasa Inda. We aim to validate a theoretical perspective with practical insight gained from the ongoing development. There were two main ways how we conducted this project, which is mainly the site visit and the interview. For the site visit, we went to an area called PTD 64472 HFM 973729, Taman Wangsa Inda. And the travel time was estimated about like 34 minutes drive from our house and the construction area. It's, a, it's relatively 10 minutes away from the main road. Now before we can actually reach the place, we we needed to pass like several residential areas and suburbs before being able to access the one Wangsa Inda itself with the current existing road. Now the whole area itself is situated next to a small stream of river. For the interview, before we were being assigned to a site, the developer office that was contacted via email to request permission as well as to be assigned for a suitable site agent and an ongoing construction project where they, where they think is suitable for us. The site agent, Mr. Wan, was assigned and introduced to us by them, and his number was given by the developer office itself for direct communication. And he has been interviewed to understand the management and sustainable strategies that was ongoing for the site. Now, upon arrival, Mr. Wan has met us, met up with us to give a small tour around the accessible areas of the site as we asked him questions along the way. The interview itself was recorded using digital and physical use, using the voice app memo on our phones and handwritten notes. We were given the opportunity to explore one of the completed semi-detached houses, like to learn more specifically about the design of the house. And furthermore, we were graced with the chance to see an ongoing process of like road cutting for main water underpipe installation. 
I'm going to talk about result which is sustainable strategy. One of the applied sustainable strategy is waste prevention. For example, the leftover soil that excavated during drainage work is used for backfill the soil for next construction project to prevent wasting of soil. Next, reuse materials such as rebar is applied to save energy and reduce waste. Then, rainwater downpipe is applied also to harvest rainwater and improve energy efficiency. Furthermore, aluminum windows is used to improve energy efficiency, reduce waste, and promote recycling. I'm gonna to talk another result which is project management at site. The site apply human resource management. For example, a project manager is responsible to check for every aspect of a project according to the plan. For time management, define activity, sequencing activity, estimating duration of activity and resource activity, develop schedule and control schedule are involved. Then, cost management is applied to reduce the expenses by minimizing wasting of materials at site. Furthermore, risk management is applied by wearing construction shoes for all workers throughout the project to prevent injuries. I'm Seraphim Moi Chao Eun with matrix number AF210118. I'll be discussing the ways to improve sustainability, where the first one is by saving energy. The consumption of electricity can be reduced by using energy efficient lighting such as LED bulbs and compact fluorescent bulbs instead of traditional incandescent lights. Other than that, renewable energy sources such as solar panels is encouraged as it helps in reducing greenhouse gas emissions as well as other harmful pollutants. During the site visit, wooden doors were used for the exterior of the houses. Wooden doors are the least energy efficient as they provide very little insulation and have high maintenance due to moisture absorption that leads to deformation. Fiberglass doors are recommended as they are among the most energy efficient and durable options. They provide excellent insulation and are nearly maintenance free because they do not deform or expand. The second way would be conserving water. Installation of low flow fixtures can save up to 50% on water consumption compared to conventional fixtures. Grey water systems can be implemented to reuse water produced during daily household activities. The filtered grey water will be rotated to flower beds and gardens instead of being rotated through the septic system, decreasing the amount of wastewater and saving energy through less pumping and processing. Lastly, sustainability can be achieved by utilizing green materials and environmental friendly solution. Lightweight concrete decreases approximately 30% of the electricity consumed for air conditioning as it is well insulated due to its high porosity structure. Not only that, its manufacturing process also emits significantly fewer emissions than conventional ones. Utilizing of paint that does not contain BOC, which is volatile organic compounds, can reduce pollution and ensure health of communities. Recycled water is recommended during construction instead of portable water to minimize the stress on natural resources and wastewater treatment systems. Green Building Index Assessment is suggested as it evaluates the environmental design and performance of buildings, allowing developers to design and build sustainable buildings that reduce environmental impact. Hi, I'm back and I'll be concluding our presentation. Now, the concept of sustainable construction management being applied to real-life construction works generally depends on two things, which is resource availability and economical sustenance of said developing company. Nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that sustainability is crucial in many aspects. This involves covering a wide range of topics, such as waste minimization, energy conservation, resource efficiency, and social and communal well-being. Well, these are done by using methods and approaches that reduce the negative effects on the environment, as well as encouraging social responsibility and guarantee a project's financial stability over its whole life. Therefore, in order to minimize these impacts on the environment, as well as improve social well-being and ensure long-term economic resilience, sustainable construction management in Malaysia entails implementing social and environmental responsibles, as well as economical and viable practices throughout the construction process. Now, to explain a little bit, it's not on the slide, the International Organization of Standard 
digitization, ISO, it offers a generally accepted definition of sustainable construction management. Now, sustainable construction management, according to ISO 15392-2008, is that the adoption of an integration of appropriate principles, policies, and practices, and actions throughout the project and facility life cycle that address and balance environmental, societal, and economic considerations as what we've uh, covered during in the second paragraph. Now, this concept highlights the necessity of a well-rounded strategy that considers sociological and economical issues in addition to environmental ones. Now, beyond just the building stage, sustainable construction management considers a project whole life cycle from planning and design to building, operating and maintaining, and finally decommissioning or repurposing. That is all for our presentation today. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Goodbye.